Hey, so uh, I wasn't gonna do a vlog, but now I'm going on a rescue for some fish. Uh, my friend David uh, contacted me today via my friend Ed, and uh, Sean Casey Animal Rescue is involved in this, and I'm gonna, I don't know what's happening. So we're, come with me. Tashlich, have you ever heard of Tashlich? No. Okay, so that's what we're, that's what we're dealing with today. Tashlich is a uh, Jewish ceremony ritual that's performed on the High Holy Days. Similar to Kaporos in its, um, you know, in, in its meaning, but it's carried out a little differently. So I'm going to read from you from, from about religion, so that I don't fudge this. Okay. Tashlich is a ritual that many Jews observe during Rosh Hashanah. Tashlich means casting off in Hebrew, and it involves symbolically casting off the sins of the previous year by tossing pieces of bread or another food into a body of flowing water. Just as the water carries away the bits of bread, so too are the sins symbolically carried away. In this way, the participant hopes to start the new year with a clean slate. The Tashlich is uh, traditionally performed on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, but if this day falls on Shabbos, then Tashlich isn't observed until the second day of Rosh Hashanah. Um, it is not performed on the first day. It can be done any time up until the last day of Sukkot, which is thought to be the last day of the New Year's judgment period. In order to perform Tashlich, take pieces of bread or another food and go to a flowing body of water such as a river, stream, sea, or ocean. Lakes or ponds that have fish are also a good place because both the animals will eat the food and because fish are immune to the evil eye. Some traditions say that fish are also significant because they can be trapped in nets just as we can be trapped in sin. Okay. So that's the gist of it. Um, and growing up, I went to Temple Beth Emmeth, which is here in this neighborhood, and we'd walk to Prospect Park, and we'd throw our breadcrumbs into the lake. A lot of um, people I know that live on the Upper West Side, for example, will go to the Hudson River and do it. Um, and the tradition is that you go to a, a, a river or a lake, and you throw bread and uh, and you cast your sins and you know some ducks or geese or fish will eat them. Um, so I learned last year that um, whereas in my upbringing we went to the lake um, that the ultra-orthodox in Crown Heights and we're going to the world headquarters of, um, of the Lubavitch um, community they have decided that instead of going to the lake or the river that they would bring the lake to them and so at the beginning of the Rosh Hashanah they had so they have two pools there's a pool outside of the the women's shul and outside of the men's shul and they had I don't know how many goldfish of various sizes dumped at the beginning of Rosh Hashanah into these pools fountains that you'll see um, and so as, as I read, the, the ritual is usually performed on the first or second day mm -hmm. of Rosh Hashanah, but it can be performed un up until the end of Sukkot, and Sukkot ended last week, so we actually could have done this a couple of days ago, and we had problems last year because we went uh, a day or two before the end of Sukkot, and so, you know, it's about a three-week window of time that you can perform this ritual, and 90 to 95 percent of, of Jews do it on the first or second day. But last year we got into some trouble because we went in to rescue the fish. We Ofra, who, who will meet, called us, you know, very upset because lots of the fish were dead. And um, there's like, you'll see the, the, the pools get really dirty and gross. We're in the clear now, Sukkot has ended, and we've gotten permission from the rabbis, and Ofra's gonna be there, and she'll make sure that we're smooth in how we do this rescue today. But the bottom line is that there are gonna be two pools um, that we're gonna go to. One of them we definitely have access to. One of them, apparently, she's still trying to. It, it, there's a key. We need. We need. Okay. We need a key. Um, and uh, most of the fish will be dead, and there'll be a lot of garbage, and it will be really disgusting, and the water will be really horrible. But some fish will hopefully be alive, and if we get one, it'll be worth it. And Sean. Uh, so, as I started to tell you, I took my car to the mechanic yesterday, which is yeah. actually around the corner from here, to get an oil change. And as I was waiting for the work to be done, I got a falafel across the street, and I was sitting and eating and reading, and that's when the email came in. And I walked over here, and I asked Sean if he wanted to go back and do this again today. Well, yeah. I asked him if he wanted to do it yesterday. It sounded like it was an urgent situation, but 
He said he couldn't do it yesterday, we could do it today. Um, and I called the woman, Ofra, who's there now, and said, sure, if we can come tomorrow, that'd be fine. Okay, cool. So here we go. So, no, but I'm saying you had the same grace. Yeah, same, same. We'll see what it's like next door after. Yeah, we're going to So the, the reason they're up breathing at the top is there's no oxygen in the water. They're trying to find oxygen. Uh, since there's no filtration, what you have is, and so many fish, the ammonia is building up. Every time they urinate, uh, okay. they throw food in there, that food's not being eaten because they're not actually hungry. They're, they, all they want right now is to breathe. So the food rots, it creates mess, it creates all kinds of toxins in the water. Uh, so they're actually coming out of the water just in search of trying to find oxygen. So it's a really uncomfortable feeling for them because they're having trouble breathing. When the ammonia levels get really high, it actually can burn the fish and it gives them a burning sensation. Oh. So it's important to get these guys out uh, as soon as possible. So the water level is getting really low now. It smells pretty bad. It's all the like... All the food. All the feed them sinks to the bugs. They're not actually eating it. It just sinks to the bottom of the and so once it gets a little lower, we're going to start pulling the fish out and putting them in these buckets. Yep. And uh, take them back to Sean Casey, where there are some tanks, big tanks filled with filtered water waiting for them. <laughs> I don't think we'll... Oh, it stinks! Oh my God! Yeah, that's why I'm... Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Should I start skipping? Yeah, no, you can hang out for a little. They have to do it. They should never do it. They should not have put fishes there anymore. They, they have to. Why? They don't have to. Yeah, exactly. Now you don't put them in there and kill them. No, I, I'm taking uh, a picture. Take care of the That's like a dog and a cat. This is the same water thing. Is disgusting and there's no way there's no there's no way to undiscuss this water. Gross. Look, this is the scrapings. Oh and there's just dead ones in there. That one's breathing, get them in there. A couple of these guys. There's another one. Oh, that guy. Freedom. What's uh, the with the back one? That all of them? What are going to do? Okay. Well, Alright, this one's not even that I don't know bad, what they're going to do with it. No, they did something. They're done. Look. 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 I know for a fact the water is gonna go left and right. Look at these guys. They're like, hey, it's sunlight. That's pretty cool. Wow. Um, so last year was worse than this, than what we saw today? Yeah, like um, 46 times worse last year. This year the fish were like mostly alive. There were no cigarette butts or like 90% less cigarette butts and less garbage floating at the top and the bottom of the tank. Like, I, I only had like an impulse to throw up once or twice as opposed to every yeah. second of the four hours that it took us last year to do it. 
Uh, we came more prepared this year. We had better equipment. We had permission. Uh, so those things made made for this year to be a more successful and, and easier rescue. Fuck. So what would you say to someone who's like, well, why are you... Because someone asks us this, like, yeah, this guy was like, well, what are you doing? Are you taking our fish? We're like, we're rescuing the fish. He's like, who rescues fish? We do, <laughs> like, they're dying. This water is, it stinks. And it was, you couldn't, there was a point in there where we were trying to fish out the fish. I saw a fish, I was trying to get him. And then, I, he was gone. I couldn't see him because the water was so dirty. Like, I couldn't see it just in a few inches of water. Yeah, and the grossest part about the water this year, as opposed to garbage and cigarette butts, was just, like, the remains of other fish were, I mean, when you took a, the net and tried to get the fish out, the net was littered with clumps of dead fish, so that was gross. It's nasty. Anyway, that's our reflection. You guys have no idea. It was the clean water. We filled the bucket with mud It was nasty. Yeah. So what, your car's all, like, got fish and water everywhere, right? No fish, no water, but I didn't smell no fish. Turns the net, you guys know that, right? Sorry. So these tanks are where uh, the so, fish are gonna go. You, Mike, are you gonna do the video? Yeah, I'm filming it right now. I filled these up last night. The water got cleared out. We're ready for to be a new home for all of these fish that we brought back. He's taking them out, putting them in. That's some of the dead fish parts I was telling you about. <laughs> Gross. It's a little nauseating. <laughs> Wait for this moment where you like. These guys are like happy. <laughs> this is a couple days after that. Uh, I left my camera at a student's house. I had to go get it. Blah blah. blah. So I'm editing it this morning. Um, guys, can we not? with the animals as property anymore. I mean, it's not hard to just not do something like that. Like, go to a lake and then do your thing. Don't, like, I don't, I, I feel a big vegan rage coming on right now because they were just gonna, if it hadn't been for that woman who called, uh, uh, other people that got called, so many people were involved in that happening. Those fish would have just died in that water. And the, I, you may think, oh, they're just fish. Well, they're not fish. I mean, they're, fi they're fish, but it's not just fish. It's these fish that were probably bred to be sold at a pet store, and then some randos decide to throw them in this fucked up, disgusting pool, and then just leave them there. Like, that's their life. <laughs> this is the life we do to a lot of animals. All the animals are screwed over by humans 100% of the time. Ah, uh, I hear the arguing, well, not 100, maybe not 100% of the time. Like, people are nice to animals, but it's far and few between. Billions of animals, billions are like, have miserable lives because of us and for no other reason than we want to do something with them. We want to eat them, we want to make a coat out of them, we want to make shoes out of them, we want to take their milk and throw their babies in a veal crate. Guys, it sucks. <laughs> it's not hard to stop fucking with animals. Can you just stop? That'd be great. And if you already did stop, I appreciate you. <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> Uh, thanks for watching this. It was actually pretty cool to go on this rescue and sort of get connected with Joan Casey uh, Rescue, which is right around the corner for me. Uh, and pardon my whatever language I just used. I, I get really angry when I see this kind of thing. 
there's absolutely no reason why that had to happen. You can hear someone in the background say, oh, you can't, you should stop doing this. And the person from the play said, oh, they have to. No, they don't. You don't have to. You don't have to take fish and throw them in a putrid pool and leave them there. You don't have to do that. You also don't have to eat them. You also don't have to drink their secretions and make cheese out of it. Like, guys, just stop screwing over animals. It's really easy. Okay, bye.